Good morning. Welcome to Thought for the Day on Thursday the 23rd of March. Today's reading is Psalm 86 and it is taken from the English Standard Version of the Bible. A Prayer of David Hear me, Lord, and answer me, for I am poor and needy. Guard my life, for I am faithful to you. Save your servant who trusts in you. You are my God. Have mercy on me, Lord, for I call to you all day long. Bring joy to your servant, Lord, for I put my trust in you. You, Lord, are forgiving and good, abounding in love to all who call on you. Hear my prayer, Lord. Listen to my cry for mercy. When I am in distress, I call to you because you answer me. Among the gods there is none like you, Lord. No deeds can compare with yours. All the nations you have made will come and worship before you, Lord. They will bring glory to your name. For you are great and do marvellous deeds. You alone are God. Teach me your way, Lord, that I may rely on your faithfulness. Give me an undivided heart, that I may fear your name. I will praise you, Lord my God, with all my heart. I will glorify your name forever. For great is your love toward me. You have delivered me from the depths, from the realm of the dead. Arrogant foes are attacking me, O God. Ruthless people are trying to kill me. They have no regard for you. But you, Lord, are a compassionate and gracious God, slow to anger, abounding in love and faithfulness. Turn to me and have mercy on me. Show your strength in behalf of your servant. Save me because I serve you just as my mother did. Give me a sign of your goodness, that my enemies may see it and be put to shame. For you, Lord, have helped me and comforted me. David, fleeing for his life, turning to God in prayer. That is something we all do, often as a last resort when things go wrong. In fact, I seem to remember a statistic from the Alpha Course about how many people who profess not to believe in God will pray in desperate situations. But I know I have been guilty of praying without really expecting an answer. Sometimes, when I can't th see a way through a messy situation, and therefore I can't tell God what I think his response ought to be, I somehow think he won't be able to figure it out either. So there are several things that struck me about this psalm. David starts from a place of humility. I am poor and needy. As opposed to my arrogance in thinking that God can't fix my problem unless I can tell him how. David acknowledges God's power. There is none like you among the gods, O Lord nor are there any works like yours. By including praise in the middle of his prayer, David reminds himself of God's majesty and thus builds his own faith in God's ability to solve the problem. David recognises God's character, but you, O Lord, are a God merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness. We can ask all this this all-powerful, majestic God, to intervene because of his character. Finally, David calls upon his relationship with God. Save your servant who trusts in you. You are my God. And even in the midst of his struggles, David is asking God to build that relationship. Teach me your way, O Lord, that I may walk in your truth. Unite my heart to fear your name. This wonderful prayer charts a journey from despair to hope, not only that God will save David from those who wish to do him harm, but that he will teach him and draw him closer too, and that when David's enemies are put to shame, 
it will be not so that David is vindicated, but that God is glorified. There is a children's song that says, Have we made our God too small? He made the heavens and earth, and he reigns on high. Yet he's got time for you and I. Let us humble ourselves in our need before God. Let us remember that our God is big enough for anything. Let us be always seeking to learn God's ways. Let us trust in his unfathomable, unfailing love. And when our prayers are answered, sometimes in spectacular fashion, let us ensure that God gets the glory. Have a blessed rest of your day.